in 3D, we need some reference points. So when we're talking about a vector, we need to talk about how far this vector is moving along X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And for that, we have these three reference points. These are the points that we have. A, 1, 0, 0. This is on the X axis. That's one unit away from the origin. We have 0, 1, 0. That's B. This is on the Y axis. And then we have C, 0, 0, 1, and this one along the Z axis. All these points are one unit away from the origin. This one along the X axis, this one along the Y axis, and this one along the Z axis. So we can measure how far we are as a multiple of these three distances. We'll use these three vectors, OA, OB, and OC as our references. And in this vector world, we have special names for these. We call them I cap, J cap, and K cap. I cap is a unit vector along the X axis. J cap is the unit vector along the Y axis. And K cap is the unit vector along the Z axis. All three of them along the positive X, Y, and Z axis. So these are the unit vectors. And we'll be using these vectors to represent all the other vectors. So let's take this point P. If this is x, y, z, we represent OP vector, which is the position vector of this point P, that is equal to x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap. What this means is to reach P from this point O, we'll have to move x units along the positive x axis, y units along the positive y axis, and z units along the positive z axis. So we've basically broken down this vector into its components, which is what they're called X, Y, and Z. They're called the rectangular or scalar components. And if we take I cap, J cap, K cap along with them, we have X, I cap, Y, J cap, and Z, K cap. These are the vector components of this position vector OP. This way of writing this vector gives us both the magnitude and the direction. Now we can use this to find vectors that are not position vectors. How do we find the vector joining two different points? Let's say we have these two points and we want to find the vector joining these two points. This one. How do we figure this out? So for this, we need the position vectors of these two points, the initial point and the terminal point. Let's say the initial point is P1. The position vector for P1 is OP1. That's X1 I cap plus Y1 J cap plus Z1 K cap some coordinates. Similarly, we have OP2 vector, that's X2 I cap plus Y2 J cap plus Z2 K cap. Now we can use the triangle law of addition to figure out P1 P2 vector. This vector will be OP2 vector minus OP1 vector, the difference of these two vectors. P1 is the initial point and P2 is a terminal point. So OP2 vector minus OP1 vector, final minus initial. So this will be, if you subtract the coordinates, this will be x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap plus z2 minus z1 k cap. You take the difference of x coordinates, y coordinates, and z coordinates. And the magnitude of p1, p2, that's going to be the square root of this square plus this square plus this square. The same way we find the magnitude of the unit vectors. So this is how we deal with vectors joining two points. Let's practice. Find the magnitude of a vector, that's i cap plus j cap plus k cap. Now it looks like if all the components are 1, 1 and 1, this is probably a unit vector. But let's check. Let's check the magnitude. That's 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square square root. That's actually root 3. So the magnitude is not 1. This is not a unit vector. Let's, let's find the magnitude of this one. Find the magnitude of c vector. That's 1 by root 3 i cap plus 1 by root 3 j cap plus 1 by root 3 k cap. Let's find the magnitude. So mod of c, that's square root of this square plus this square plus this square. If you square 1 by root 3, you get 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3, that's actually equal to 1. So c vector is a unit vector. Let's do one more. Find the sum of vectors a, b, and c, where a vector is 2i cap plus 3j cap plus 4k cap b vector is minus 2i cap plus 4j cap plus 2k cap and c vector is 3i cap minus 4j cap minus k cap. How do you add all three of them? Find the sum of a, b and c. Pause the video, give this a try. Okay, 
So the way to add these vectors is look at their individual components. Look at their I caps, J caps and K caps. Add all of them separately. So A plus B plus C will be 2 minus 2 plus 3 I cap, 3 plus 4 minus 4 J cap and then 4 plus 2 minus 1 K cap. So this becomes 2 minus 2 0 plus 3 that's 3 I cap plus 3 J cap plus 5 K cap. So 3 plus 3 plus 5. All right, let's look at the next one. Find the value of X, Y and Z such that A vector equals to X I cap plus 2 J cap plus Z K cap. This is A vector and B vector is 2 I cap plus Y J cap plus K cap. This is B vector. These two vectors are equal. So we have to solve for X, Y and Z and we're given that A vector and B vector are equal. Now, what does it mean for these two vectors to be equal? This means they have the same magnitude and the same direction, which means in the component world that their corresponding components are equal. So corresponding components are equal, which means X is equal to two and two is equal to Y and Z is equal to one. So you look at what's written next to Y cap, that's X, here it's two, so X is equal to two, Y is equal to two and Z is equal to one. So this gives us three independent, three separate equations. We get each of them by comparing the corresponding components. All right. So let's recap. If we have a point P with coordinates X, Y, and Z, the position vector is X I cap plus Y J cap plus Z K cap. To find the magnitude, we just take the square root of X square plus Y square plus Z square. And to find the direction cosines, if this is R, we have X by R, Y by R, and Z by R. If we have more than one vectors, if we have two vectors, if A vector is A1 I cap plus A2 J cap plus A3 K cap and B vector is B1 I cap plus B2 J cap plus B3 K cap, if we have these two vectors, we can get their sum by adding their corresponding components and we can get the difference by subtracting their corresponding components. For sum, we have A1 plus B1. For difference, we have A1 minus B1. And the same is the case for J cap and K cap. When are these two vectors equal? When is A vector equal to B vector? Well, that's when the difference is a zero vector. If the difference is zero, their corresponding components will be zero, which means A1 minus B1 is zero, A2 minus B2 is zero, and A3 minus B3 is zero, which means individually all of these three are zero, which means A1 is equal to B1, A2 equals to B2, and A3 equals to B3. And there are some more properties where we're multiplying constants with vectors. So if you're multiplying a vector by a lambda, the, all the components get multiplied. Lambda A vector equals to Lambda A1 I cap plus Lambda A2 J cap plus Lambda A3 K cap. So if you're doubling a vector, all the components get doubled. If you're multiplying the vector by 10 times, all the components get multiplied by 10. The distributive laws also work the same. So if you have two numbers K and M, and if you're multiplying K plus M by A vector, you get K times A vector plus M times A vector. Here A vector gets distributed. If you have more than one multiplications, if you have K times M times A vector, you can multiply all of them together and then multiply that by A vector. So K times M times A vector, that's K times M times A vector. And if you have more than one vector, if you have K times A vector plus B vector, here K gets distributed, you have K times A vector plus K times B vector.